Dearest audience, uh, it's an honor to be here, really. Uh, and without Fred Lippin, uh, I would not have this adventure coming to Canada for the first time in my life. And I, I appreciate really so much to be here. And I would also like to thank, thank Bruce Bogle. Uh, he's, he's spending his precious time uh, as a helper and supporter on, on this trip. So thank you, Bruce. Uh, in my speech here today, uh, it will be centered around uh, my latest published book uh, in English. Uh, but the greatest of this is freedom. And it's about uh, the immigration uh, consequences uh, in Europe. Uh, and I have chosen some issues uh, from the book. I can, of course, not take it all. Um, <laughs> yeah, you should also know that the book is translated by Bruce Bauer from Norwegian. This is a man who knows both French, German, Dutch, Norwegian, Sw Swedish, Danish. One more was Spanish. Did I get it wrong? So, um, but before I uh, uh, go into the book, I would like to have a guessing game. I would like you to try and find out where is this photo taken and when was it taken. Egypt. 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 Iran, Iran, during the Shah. The 60s. Yeah. 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 One said 60s. That's correct. During the 60s. And where? Egypt. Egypt. Afghanistan. Iran. I'm not going to give you more time. <laughs> it's taken at the main art school in Karachi, in Pakistan, in the 60s. When I saw this photo the first time in a book, in Pakistan in 2004 about female painters of Pakistan. My thoughts, they flew straight to Paris. Look at those very modern young women. And there was also a boy sitting there, together with girls. And when you look at the one way down in the corner, in my opinion, she has arranged her way in a very sensual manner. This is not a hijab strict Islamic symbol. Okay, let's go on. Again, where and when? Islamized 
even the penal code for Pakistan in the beginning of the 1980s. And from then on, it has just gone one way. As we say in Norway, the way uh, the way the chicken, uh, no, the chicken uh, kicks. And the point, my point here is that there are two points. In this situation, not only in Pakistan, you have seen mainly all over the Muslim world. There is a setback, there is a rise of fundamentalism. This is also affecting our Muslims in Norway, in Europe, and also in Canada and US. The second lesson is, and for me the main lesson by showing you these photos, is that the more weighed the women are in our society, the less personal freedom we will find both for men and women, but especially for the women. So when I went to little Norway in Punjab in Pakistan, the first time in 93, we call it little Norway, they call it little Norway there in Punjab, because that is the over, uh, more than 90% of our Pakistanis in Norway, they come from this special area called Little Norway. When I went there first time uh, in the 90, beginning of the 90s, the women were dressed with the traditional clothes, the national clothes, with maybe a shawl, shawl over the hair, maybe, or over here. When I went there the second last time in 2004, it was the hijab and the niqab most of them were using. The same has happened in my hometown for 25 years, Oslo. Pakistani young girls, women, they were wearing maybe Pakistani clothes in Oslo. Or they were wearing Western clothes. Today, hijab is the most used headscarf, if you can call it a headscarf. And it was Pakistan that opened the field for me through a Norwegian born, a Norwegian born young woman, I call her Sima, who was married to her second cousin in 1992 at that point in Pakistan. And the gun was there because she denied to marry him. And it ended up that she was beaten by eight family members, and in the end, she, she didn't say yes to the marriage, so in the end, the uncle pulled the gun, and then she said, of course, yes. Um, uh, when I met her, she said to me that, according to Islam, they needed my consent yeah. to do a marriage, so they got the consent. Um, <coughs> Interesting. I'll just take a small. It's quite interesting. You, you might know wonder why do I have these photos? This was a criminal act, and that is very interesting. I've been working on this issue for now two decades, and the interesting part is that even when it is a good forced merge, they are having these videos, these wedding videos. So this video was taken out of the home of this girl after she returned to Norway. I can't go through the whole story. But it ended up in court. And, uh, and it, uh, it was the first case in Norway when it comes to annulling and marriage. Uh, <coughs> this young woman was supposed to live here, cook on a mud floor, on an open fire. But it didn't end there, because after 11 years, my days in the marriage, and she managed to deny the husband his right, culturally and religiously, namely to have sex with her, or in my words, to rape her, by claiming that she had prepared. But on the 11th day, she managed to escape through a back door in a shop, and in Turka, she got on a bus, six hour trip to Islamabad. How she managed that with even and family and police trying to trace her is actually a miracle. And, and Sunday evening, she managed to find our ambassador's residency in Islamabad. And he believed her story 
and he shipped her back from Celtic to Norway. And back home in Norway, she contacted me as a journalist. So that's how I got into this issue. <laughs> she contacted me because she wanted to tell the Norwegian public, the politicians, what's going on. And as she said it, I'm not the only one. There are hundreds like me. I would have said it like this with my experience today. There will be thousands like her in the coming years. Because at that time we had quite a lot of children from Muslim countries, especially girls. And they would, the coming years, re reach the, uh, the age of marriage. <clears throat> but I would also like to say that because of Islam, the vast majority of Muslim girls in Norway and Europe are far, far from being free to marry the people they love. Only the exceptions can marry who they love. And this young woman's shocking story resulted in legislation in Norway. We got a separate law in the penal code against forced marriages. My first three months stay in Pakistan in 1993 was an immense cultural shock. The total lack of empathy for an individual's sufferings, it made me speechless. speechless. I met, for example, girls as young as 16 years old, lying in their beds at burnt units in hospitals in Islamabad and the world, lying in their beds knowing they would not survive. <coughs> While typical, the mother-in-law guarded their tongues so they didn't tell the truth that it wasn't the stove that burst while they were cooking, it was the in-laws that had burned them. <coughs> and why? mainly because of dissatisfaction with the amount of dowry the girl and her family had brought into the marriage. <laughs> in 1999, I met Shakira, 19 years old, also at the burnt unit in the world. And she had been destroyed because she had brought too small a dowry into the marriage. And this is the 19-year-old girl that threw acid on her. And this is another young woman, her name is Nina. She's 22 years old and <coughs> the doctors said to me that she would survive. And, but the question then is, the in-laws did this, the husband did it. So where should she go? She couldn't go back to them, obviously. And for the family to take her back is a great shame. It's a shame for them, because it's always the woman's fault, whatever happens. And when you are from a poor family, how should they manage to feed another mother? And there is no such thing as social services and these things, those kind of countries. I think it is impossible for us to grasp the degree of evilness that lies behind a picture like this. And believe me, there are so many, so many of these young women. You read about them every day in small notes in the newspapers in Pakistan. Every day. And Shakila and Hina's destiny could also have been the destiny of a girl from Canada or from Norway. This is the new world for us. Immigration from the non Western world to Norway, which is very similar to the situation all over Europe. It started around 1970. Young and middle-aged men came to work. <coughs> often